So I had a little bit of an accident with my Canon G30 while we were on vacation over the summer. Um, I was unpacking the car and did not realize that my camera gear bag flap was not zipped up and pulled the bag out of the car and this camcorder flew into a concrete driveway. And for the most part, it seemed to work. Um, however, when I got back and started reviewing my footage, I noticed there was a dark spot in uh, a lot of the image, a lot of the outdoor images. Uh, anything with outdoor lighting, um, it's prone to pick up this spot, and that is because there's a very small scratch right dead center in the lens here. And, um, and that's enough to catch light and anything else when you're out in sunlight. Now, stupidly when I got home, I decided, well, maybe I can you know, quote unquote buff that out. And I took some rubbing compound and thought maybe it was just a minor scratch and ended up, uh, there's some sort of a coating on the factory lens here, probably some sort of UV type coating. And that actually, uh, the compound took that off in that area. So it didn't do anything to the scratch, um, but it uh, left this scuffed mark um, on the lens. And so, which made the issue worse as far as bright sunlight. Uh, inside in dimly lit situations, camera works beautifully, but outside, uh, not so much. And another issue is this manual focus ring. Um, I don't really use it all that much, if ever, um, but the fall uh, messed it up quite a bit. You can see the casing right here is pushed out. Um, and when you turn this, it's very hard to turn. And you can watch there on the camera how it's kind of goes up and down as you, as you turn it um, because it's not perfectly round anymore and it just makes some awful scraping noises as well. So that's a secondary issue um, but I really wanted to see if I could uh, replace both this ring and mo more importantly uh, the lens itself. So I scoured the internet for parts for this camera and came up empty. Uh, I even uh, checked eBay several times for maybe somebody selling a parts camera. Came up empty. Um, finally, one day I called Canon up, and lo and behold, they will actually sell you uh, the lens assembly and um, the focus ring. Uh, so, the lens assembly on this camera is part number DY1-9661 and Canon wants $370 for it. Um, the front cover as they call it or the focus ring um, is part number DG3-5207-010 and Canon wants just over $82 for it. So by the time you put tax and shipping on those parts, um, you're looking at easily over $500, um, which is about what the new ver or about half of what the new version of this camera um, currently retails for. Uh, so I just didn't see that as being a viable option. I'm going to spend $500 plus on this camcorder, which is now a couple of years old. I'll get the new uh, version of it uh, for a little bit over a thousand. Now just about when I had given up hope of finding parts for this camera, a listing popped up on eBay for this particular camera as a parts camera. And it was also was a bundle with another Canon camcorder, which I didn't really need, but if the price was right, I would definitely buy the, uh, the lot of both of them. Um, the camera in question uh, was listed as being water damaged, uh, but it did power on and it had an issue with the power jack. Um, to me, the water damage doesn't scare me in this case because as long as the lens isn't scratched, uh, the water shouldn't hurt the lens at all. 
Uh, so I messaged the seller and uh, he confirmed the lens was in tip-top shape and he also was willing to do a buy it now auction for just the single camera by itself. Uh, so this was great. He was a great seller to work with and ended up getting the replacement camera um, uh, for about $250. So now we have a parts camera and uh, we're going to see exactly what's wrong with this camera uh, before we tear it apart and uh, then we're going to show you how to do at least a partial tear down um, to replace the lens and the focus ring. Okay, here is our donor camera. Uh, cosmetically, this thing looks great. Um, so you can see, if you look closely, some signs that it was uh, involved in some sort of uh, water damage. Uh, some rust around the screws and the hot shoe here, but most importantly, that lens looks fantastic. And the focus ring and this front cover is all the way it's supposed to be and moves freely. So uh, mentioned that when plugged into AC power they were having problems making a good solid connection. Um, so there's definitely that issue there but beyond that and showing a picture of the screen on I don't really know what does or doesn't work on this. I didn't say. I didn't care. Now honestly I don't ever use uh, this power connection. I charge my batteries with a wall charger and I just hate using the little plug-in charger. So that being an issue isn't a big deal. Now of course I'm not trying to fix this camera but I am curious what all it does and doesn't do in case I need any future parts. So let's go ahead and stick a memory card in here. And battery in. Okay. Alright, so the screen did come on and we do have a time and date screen coming up. It's kind of unusual that that would come up uh, unless it's just been sitting a long time, but I have a suspicion that the uh, battery might uh, might be shot the little battery that keeps track of that. So let's just okay out of that. And okay, so it does appear to work. Um, okay, uh, we have found a problem here. No zoom. So, not, deal, not a big deal for repairing my camera, um, but that, that would be something that would make this not a, a very usable item. So let's check this. This ring in the front can be either set to focus or zoom. I think it's on zoom by default. Let's see, A, if this ring still works, and B, if, um, if it'll zoom that way. Okay, so it does work. Huh. You can see that I can zoom, which tells me the ring's working, but then it zooms right back out on its own. So what that probably indicates is that this button right here is malfunctioning or shorted or something, and that's causing it to, um, you know, to 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 not function. Um, but. At least this works, and you know, it might be worth um, tearing into this one a little further than I will the other one to see if this is something that's easily could be repaired or cleaned, um, you know, and, and have a, a beater camera, if you will, uh, one that will, we put the scratch lens back in it and the beat up ring and it could, it could serve some functions. Uh, otherwise, I do plan on, even if I don't fix this camera, I do plan on uh, keeping the camera. I had thought briefly about getting what I needed and selling the rest and recovering some of the money. Um, but as hard as it is to come by a parts camera um, at a good deal on this model and as ex expensive as parts are, I think I'm going to just keep this regardless. 
Okay, let's get started. Um, my original camcorder here on the left. Here's the new one, or new to me, broken one. Got the lens cap on it to protect the new lens. So let's get started getting the good parts out of this one in order to transfer them over to this one. And so if I remember correctly, um, there are several screws that hold this front assembly uh, on. It's going to pull out this way, but those screws are all hidden underneath various panels. There's a panel here, 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 and here. So let's start with the bottom one. Uh, these two screws uh, near this uh, mounting bracket don't need to come out. Should be able to get the bottom panel off now. Okay, so, wow, we can definitely see some of the water damage here. Um, this uh, ribbon cable here is what controls this focus ring. Um, so that's going to need to come out for sure. Now let's work on the top. Another screw hidden right along here, underneath this cap. Still a little bit moist under here. And you can see one of the screws right here that keeps this front cap on. And this little screw here that's got this attached to it needs to come out as well. That also holds the front cap on. And if I remember correctly, this screw right here also holds the front on. You can see it's loosening up. Maybe also this screw directly behind that other one we just pulled off. Yep, so it's actually both of these right here um, on the left side of the top. And almost forgot, we've got a little microphone cable here. And this is actually going a lot faster than it did a week or so ago when I took it apart the first time, or the other one the first time. So that little microphone cable. There's probably a correct way to do this, but this is what seems easiest for me. And so here is the first piece of the puzzle that I need for the other camera. Uh, looks like we've got some moisture, uh, signs of moisture right here, some corrosion. It did work okay though, 
So I'm going to have to look at my old one and see if maybe I should just transfer over some of those electronics. But this one did work okay, so... And this right here is the lens. This is the $370 part right here, held in place by four screws. So let's go ahead and pull it out. You can see more signs of moisture here. And there's a little rubber gasket around the perimeter of the lens that seals it off. careful with it. Okay, so this should pull straight up. And that's it. This little guy right here is $370 from Canon. I, I don't know. That's a little bit crazy to me. And so you can see it's keyed in such a way that it's only going to set the right way. So I'm going to safely set this over here and we'll cut away while I take apart the old camcorder and get it ready to transplant these parts over. Okay, so here is my original camcorder with the scratched lens, which we'll remove. And carefully transport over the new to me lens. And put these screws back in. It's a good idea when you're attaching something like this with it that has four screws to just start each one. Okay, this is the front focus ring that's not warped, and here is mine. And possibly might be a good idea to transfer some of these electronics over. They both work, but this one's very hard to turn, and this one I just don't like that corrosion in there. We'll start with this one in case I screw something up. And seeing as this was sold as an assembly, it probably wasn't really designed with service in mind. Really what I'm most interested in is this electronics here. That seems to be where the majority of the corrosion is on the other one. These appear to be the microphones here. I might pull this shield off the new one and check and see what those microphones look like on the new one. For now I'm going to set all this non-corroded stuff over here and attempt to pull out this corroded stuff on this side. Yeah, these microphones are pretty corroded on this new to me uh, ring here so I'm going to go ahead and transfer mine over because I know they work. Go off camera and blow out this corrosion a little bit. So what I did was took some uh, just general electronics cleaner here and some canned air and microfiber cloth and cleaned up this this new front cover assembly here and discovered this little metal piece that was giving me such a fit on my old one it actually comes off quite easily um, uh, when it's not all bent up like this one is so I suspect that's the whole reason I was struggling so much on that one so now I'm gonna take the guts from mine that are not all corroded and install them in this new one Microphones first. And 
and I don't know, it's probably can't see, I make this focus here, but yeah, right in that little hole right there, there's little grooves, and that's what those sensors on that board I just pulled out are detecting. And I have a feeling, I'm guessing there's maybe some sort of infrared sensor and receiver. Don't really know. But that's how the focus ring works. So the little PCB, you could even call it, goes down first. This metal bracket goes down second. You can put this screw in and this one to hold it in place, but this third one doesn't need to go in until this outer shell goes on first. That middle piece was a little tricky to get back on. It seems that the best way to start was on this side and kind of roll it in and there's teeny tiny, tiny uh, tabs that have to go in and you know, I don't want to bend this one up like the other one was bent. Um, but it, it eventually slid into place. It just takes a lot of patience. And I assume that if I knew what I was doing, this would be a lot faster. Um, but there again, I don't believe that this assembly was designed to be serviced. Um, so now we have the best of both worlds. We have the non-warped outer shell and the guts out of mine that don't have so much corrosion on them. So let's get that installed back onto my camera. And the original one that was all bent up was quite hard to pull off and to get back on um, because of how warped it was. So I suspect this one will be a little easier. It's probably still going to take a little bit of finagling but we just want to be wary of the microphone cable here and this little ribbon cable for the sensors. And this little tab has to slide up under these screws here. And I think if I remember correctly, I need to pull out on this. That ideally, I think that to make this repair easier, this whole side would come off, but I never ventured that far into that side. Um, I may experiment on the other camera uh, once I get this one reassembled to see how to get into this area here and see what's wrong with uh, the rocker switch and maybe that'll teach me a little bit more about how to disassemble the rest of this. really want to focus on this metal tab because it's the hardest part to get lined up. There it goes. Check and make sure we're not snagging that ribbon cable. Looks pretty good. Tuck that under a little bit better. Okay, so that side lined up. Gosh, that went in so much easier than the original one that came off here. It's almost hard to believe. It's definitely going to be nice to have the peace of mind of having a parts camera. I really like this camera. It's great, great prosumer camera. But like all of my camera equipment while I do try to take good care of it at the same time I use it and I use it hard and sometimes getting the shot has been more important than babying the camera. Alright so push that down in until it lines up. I remember probably not even a month after I originally got this, 
we were on vacation a few years ago, and I was about ankle deep in the ocean trying to get a shot of my daughter playing, and I got so focused on getting the shot that a rogue wave came up, and I pulled the camera up just at the last possible second. And it got a little wet, but wasn't anything too bad. All right, what I should have done was plug that microphone cable in before I... Yep, I think we're just... be better not to... Better just go ahead and pull the front loose again, then risk screwing something up. All right, I heard it click. Let's go ahead and route that cable where it's supposed to go. Minor setback there. Push that back in. Ah, oh, that just lines up so beautifully over there. So much better. All right, I'm going to snag a battery and do some quick testing before I reassemble this. All right, let's do a quick test. Well, that's a good sign. All right, so I'm liking what I'm seeing. Now one thing I could always do with the other lens with the, it had a little chip and scratch is point it up at a light and we would, I'd be able to see the scratch in the lens. But that looks great. So let's try this zoom ring here. It is working. Now this can be set for manual zoom or manual focus. That is working beautifully. And let's te test our microphones for proper operation. So we'll just record for a minute. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, one, two, three. Uh, let's go over to media mode. And let's check. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, one, two, three. Sounds great. All right, so let's get this thing uh, reassembled. Almost forgot, but this top piece needs to slide back on first because it actually has little holes right here that slide down in the side. It likes to slide in the right first. This little cap needs to come back, that's right. The hot shoe plate from the donor camera was a little bit better shape than mine, so I'm gonna, I grabbed it. Actually, you know, this the donor camera in a lot of ways cosmetically showed a lot less wear than my camera. So I'm gonna say I had a lot less use before it got wet. And I do plan on putting the donor camera back together after I finish playing with it so that I don't have to worry about losing any parts. Okay. And now we just have the bottom piece.
we are reassembled. And that about does it for this little project. Little follow up here, I started playing with the donor camera to see if maybe I could get to this rocker switch area. Uh, I'll remove the rest of the screws under this cover and a couple screws there, one in the back, there's a little one back there behind this viewfinder, one up there, a couple there. Uh, I've removed this hot shoe, but I don't think I had to, and then there was one hidden there. And now it's coming off. However, um, I went to unplug this and started to gently tug on this ribbon cable, which I do not yet know what it goes to, and you can see that the corrosion has just eaten away at this little connector, and it's, it's barely hanging on. So, I would not be surprised if that's related to the zoom problem. If so, not a... Yeah, that just... I mean, I barely touched it and it came off, so... Uh, that's not an easy fix. Whatever that goes to. Let's see. Wow. That goes to the start and stop button, which was working. <laughs> ah, that is what the corrosion will do to you. And you can see down in here more corrosion. Um, so that feeds the start and stop switch as well as this rocker switch. So, it wouldn't be surprising to me if uh, all the problem is here and not so much in the rocker switch itself. Because the rocker switch feels great. But, I mean, this board here is just in horrendous condition. I mean, the little traces, or the little pads just uh, disintegrated when I started messing around with it. Um, so, yeah, the description on this one was pretty accurate. It's definitely had a... It's been exposed to water, um, but got what I needed out of it. And there's still a plethora of good parts. One thing I would like to know is where... This has to have a little battery that keeps track of the time and the date, uh, I would say. Um, and the one in here appears to not be any good, because every time I take the battery out, it loses the time and date. I have not spotted one yet, and you would think that they would put that somewhere easy to get to. Um, uh, you'd think it would be a user replaceable item. Now to be fair, I don't know that I've ever really sat down and read the manual for this thing, so maybe, maybe I'm missing something obvious somewhere here, but I'm not seeing it. But, yep, that's... Um, don't know that there's really going to be any way to easily fix this. Um, those are fairly deteriorated connections as they, as it is, and would be really tough with the soldering equipment that I own to get that back on there. So just for science, I had a thought, well, now that all that rocker switch area is pulled loose. Uh, I wonder if I hook up my bent up focus ring from my other camera if I could zoom with it. And so it tries to, but it still zooms back out on its own. So I'm not sure what causes that. I mean, obviously this took quite a bit of water, but I'm not sure what is making the camera think zoom out is being pressed on its own. I just really can't help myself with this donor camera learning more about how it comes apart. A uh, little silver screw here and here and now this piece comes off. And I don't think I'm going to be happy until I figure out how this side comes off. Let's see if I can remember how I did this. There's a little screw here that reveals another screw here and, of course, we already had most of the screws out of this. 
you do need to free up this wire which was taped in place, this wire and this little ribbon cable. And now I think, yep, ta-da! And lots more corrosion. And still no sign, curiously, of any type of a battery for the clock. So, unless I'm just totally blind, which is possible, uh, maybe these had some sort of supercapacitor somewhere that has that kept track of it and that has failed. I don't know, but I've seen enough. I'm gonna put this back together.